Now we will be replacing the OEM slave cylinder and making our install gap adjustment. Unscrew the bolt holding the chain guide in place. Remove dust cap from banjo bleeder bolt. Gloves are recommended for this part of the install, as well as safety glasses. Remove the banjo bleeder bolt. Remove the two OEM crush washers and discard. Remove the remaining slave cylinder bolts. Ensure that the OEM gasket remains in place. Remove the OEM case o-ring from the OEM slave cylinder. This will be reinstalled with the recluse adjustable slave cylinder. Now we must prepare the recluse adjustable slave cylinder for bleeding. Use a 4mm Allen wrench to make the top o-ring visible on the adjuster screw. Pour clutch fluid into the slave cylinder port. Note that you need to use proper clutch fluid based on the specific model bike you have. Check the cap of the clutch master cylinder to determine the correct type. Turn the adjuster screw clockwise until it bottoms out while assuring that fluid stays topped off. Now turn the adjuster screw back to the initial position with the top o-ring visible. Compress the piston until it bottoms out while looking for air bubbles. If air bubbles can be seen escaping, please repeat the process. Reattach the banjo bolt using the two supplied crush washers from Recluse. Ensure that the banjo fitting is sandwiched between the crush washers, as shown. Reinstall the OEM case o-ring. You also need to make sure that the ball bearing has remained in place with the Recluse safe cylinder. This is something that was installed by Recluse. Install the adjustable slave cylinder with the OEM bolts. Attach the rubber bleed tube to the bleeder fitting on the banjo bolt. Loop the overflow tube up and into a suitable catch bottle. Remove the cap and bladder from the OEM clutch master cylinder. Rotate the clutch perch so that the master cylinder reservoir is level with the ground. Top off the reservoir with proper clutch fluid. Pump the clutch lever three to five times and hold it in. While still holding the clutch lever in, use an 8mm wrench to open the bleed port. Air and fluid should come out of the bleed tube. Tighten the bleed port back down. Make sure that the clutch fluid has remained in the reservoir and repeat this process until no air comes out of the bleed tube. Ensure that the clutch lever feels and functions properly. We want the reservoir to be about 75% full, then we can reinstall the reservoir cap. Remove the overflow tube and bottle. Reattach the dust cap. At this point of the install, we are ready to set the install gap. Using a 4mm Allen wrench with the long end inserted, turn the adjuster screw until it stops under moderate pressure. You are trying to feel for the point at which the throwout will start to lift the pressure plate. This is known as a starting point. Once you have consistently found the starting point, turn the adjuster clockwise one full turn plus five tick marks. Let the bike warm up for about 2-3 to three minutes. Now we need to check for free play game. Wrap the supplied rubber band around the bars and lever as shown. With the bike warmed up and running in neutral, flip the throttle to at least 5000 RPM. The lever should only move in about 1 8th of an inch. As you can see, we have way too much free play game. To get your lever movement down to 1 8th of an inch, we need to simply turn the adjustment screw clockwise to further lift the pressure plate. This forms a larger install gap and therefore less free play game. It's still a tad too much, so we need to continue tightening the adjustment screw. There we go. Perfect. 
On the flip side, if you don't have any free play gain, you must turn your adjustment screw counterclockwise which lowers the install gap and increases your free play gain.